Lore Lesson The Ancients Lore Page Found in Arcturus Regarding the ancient guardians of Eternum, it is clear that these beings worship ancient society but are not ancients themselves. The statues around ruins like Arcturus and others of its magnitude indicate the ancients had four arms and a split face, of which these skeletons that guard the ruins have neither. We can only be left to conclude that the skeletons that shamble about ancient ruins are those of heretics and traitors to their own humanity in revering beings like the ancients. A missive. Governor Sullis, please receive the following dispatch you requested for intelligence regarding the odd statues and column formations we have discovered in our travels. Our movement continues to the north through the rustic settlement at Everfall. Prior to reaching the bustling little town, we encountered a most troubling discovery. As I'm sure you've noted in your own observations on the island, a tower in ruin stands high into the sky in these southern regions. We reached these shattered obelisks, as the locals call it, nearly a fortnight ago. What we saw can nary be explained. The tower is indeed shattered near the top, but the fragments are held in stasis by some unexplained otherworldly power. The sight of it from its base is downright terrifying to be frank. We all felt some sort of deep resonance in our chests as we approached, and much of the expedition was concerned for their safety had we continued forward. The decision was made to send an envoy of volunteers to investigate the anomaly further, despite the many undead creatures guarding the site. Suffice it to say they returned post-haste, but not before discovering an entrance to some sort of catacomb near its base. The power, they said, was beyond their comprehension, and they reported a dismal feeling as if they knew they would perish if they descended. This was acceptable to the expedition's leaders as we too felt that we would have been outmatched had they continued into the underground system. Perhaps we will revisit the site in the future once we become more seasoned and knowledgeable of the land around us. Sir, with regard to the undead creatures of mention above, I feel the need to explain. These protectors, they are not of this world. I suppose it should not surprise any of us at this point in our journey. However, their mere presence will chill your very bones. Skull and bones, adorned with the armors of civilizations not seen in our world for centuries. From what we were able to record in our journals, armors and weaponry from the Principate, perhaps as early as the reign of Augustus, were found. On others, the red cross of the poor fellow soldiers of Christ, yet others wore the primal battle dress of the Scandinavian seafaring conquerors of old. Speculate no longer, my governor. This supernatural land has seen the likes of thousands upon thousands of years of pioneers before us. What's more, these bone guardians walk the perimeter of these ancient ruins in a detailed and predetermined patrol. If any of our party encroached, they were met with an alert and watchful eye. On two occasions, our envoy was forced to fight these guardians. By the grace of God, they survived but the description of how these dead soldiers were defeated is preposterous. Despite their armors, one could clearly see a blue pulsing stone beneath their breastbone. It seems to be the nucleus of their existence, and it wasn't until this stone was destroyed that they would stop their advance. These blue stones embedded in their bosoms have the same radiant glow of this Azoth substance we've encountered on numerous occasions. The more of this substance within their chest, the more difficult they were to defeat in combat. Even after besting one of them with shattered limbs and no plausible mode of ambulation, it merely pulled itself along with a single arm, dragging its twisted torso towards its target, hell-bent on destruction. The loyalty of these protectors never hindered their hatred of our mere presence. They were undoubtedly fierce in their will to safeguard the site. 
Perhaps these patrolling undead warriors are the soldiers on the losing end of some large conflict years ago, only to be pressed into eternal service. Only one conclusion is to be drawn. These guardians are protecting something, perhaps a great source of power. Our travel saw us north and into the settlement of Brightwood Hamlet. As our convoy visited merchants for supplies and crafters for much needed repairs, I overheard the most interesting of conversations in the marketplace. Outside of a hastily placed researcher's tent, a rather studious gentleman was speaking in hushed tones regarding his travels. His eyes shifted to and fro, making it quite obvious he didn't intend for his message to reach curious ears. Well, this prompted me to do what I do best, listen without permission. I managed to gather the gentleman's name, William Heron. It was then I realized that this was a historian that Dr. Bombastus suggested we seek. He continued to snoop his tail from the concealment of the adjacent stall. Mr. Heron described his travels of the Northern Territories in detail, with particular interest paid to his discoveries surrounding relics of a distant race called the Ancients. These ancients were said to have had knowledge in harnessing the power of the Azoth on the island. This is when my epiphany occurred. These long-abandoned ruins, the skeletal guardians, their fierce protection of the sites, the ancients. The ancients is what they protect, or perhaps their secrets, their research, or their magic. He continued to spew his findings as I shuffled for a better place in which to gather this intelligence. Of course, in my haste, my foot found the metal stake and rope securing the canopy over my head. Much to my fortune, I caught my stumble with an air of agility, but not before startling the good Mr. Heron, halting his story like cattle at a cliffside. Got your footing now, sir, he quipped. Well, you might as well come out of there in the open and listen to my tale. There are no tripping hazards out here was a bit befuddled by his clearly astute perception, but I sidled up to hear the rest of the story nonetheless. You must be Cassius, he declared. I received a missive from my colleague Dr. Bombastus that you may come calling. I nodded with noticeable embarrassment. Well, don't be shy, Cassius. This information is crucial if you intend to brave these wilds. So listen intently, there's no need to skulk about. William Heron, astronomer, historian, and seeker of truth. He continued his tale. The ancients, the race was theorized to have built a thriving civilization long before any human had ever reached Eternum. These ancients, as depicted in the weather-worn statues found throughout the island, may have been adorned with four arms and two faces. Yes, two faces, Governor. He spoke of these ancients' ability to harness the power of the Azoth natural to the island and how they may have used it to prolong their lives. It was the dangers of experimenting with this Azoth, however, that may have led to their demise. The Azoth seems to feed upon the intent of its user. It has the ability to exacerbate its effects for good or for evil. This may certainly explain the stark difference between the blue substances we found and the red plague that besets many of the beasts we found upon the island. Is this corruption we've discovered the result of experimentation with Azoth for more dastardly purposes? Mr. Heron was not certain, but he didn't deny the inquiry. He instead raised an eyebrow and shot a smile in my direction, as if he was impressed by my conclusion. Mr. Heron proceeded with his findings, revealing more of his research. He had uncovered clues in the depths of several ruin sites of a great conflict taking place during the reign of the Ancients. The Ancient Guardians, he speculated, were the soldiers on the island during that conflict. He mentioned several sites of interest, but he warned of their dangers, adding that none of them should be explored without the employ of highly trained fighters. The first was a settlement deep in the swamps of the South and East Territories called Reekwater. He explained how a place known as the Pools of Eternity may have been the birthplace of the ancient guardians, 
where the ancients transformed human soldiers into restless sentries using unnatural rituals. Mr. Heron also described local talk of a missing expedition in the area of a dig site called the Lazarus Instrumentality in the region of Eternal Pools. In addition, he mentioned a good location to start research would be at the Monument at Morningdale, the best preserved location of the ancients he has found to date. The issue, he exclaimed, was getting to it. The last location is one we are somewhat familiar with. The Shattered Obelisk, he called it. The ruined tower held in stasis outside of Everfall with the chest thrumming force. He believes this very tower may hold the secret to the ancient's technology and the purpose of the many obelisks scattered throughout the island. To my dismay, sir, I am short of time. Our expedition has resupplied and they await my completion of this correspondence before our journey to the north. It suits me, however, as I have some theories on these ancients of my own. Allow me the discretionary time to ponder these thoughts and craft a detailed analysis for you. I surmise there may be much more at play here than what appears at first glance. I shall send a runner with an update when we reach a suitable camp upon our journey east. The locals tell of a most curious bridge on the trek that may provide some further details on the ancients we seek. Your most loyal servant and friend, Cassius Kilborn.